Hello, my name's Andrew and welcome back to All About Russia. Today we will be talking about one of the Caucasian ethnic groups, the Abkhazians. The Abkhazians, known in their native tongue as Abswa, mainly reside in the unrecognised state of Abkhazia. However, significant numbers of Abkhazians can be found in the Russian Federation, particularly in Moscow and the Moscow Oblast, Krasnodar Krai, the Rostov Oblast, St. Petersburg, the Adygea Republic, and the Karachay Cherkessia Republic. Communities of Abkhazians also reside in Turkey, Syria, Jordan, Georgia, Ukraine, and the United States of America. The Abkhazians speak Abkhaz, a language very similar to Abazin. Both Abazin and Abkhaz are members of the Abazki branch of the Northwestern Caucasian family tree, and thus can be kind of mutually understood. Abkhaz has three main dialects, the Biz, Sats, and Abzora. The Abzora dialect is primarily used for literature in the Abkhaz language, and for those of you who are interested, sounds a little like this. The Abkhaz people can be split into 15 different subgroups. However, historically, there were many more groups or tribes that they could be split into. Due to historic migration, many of these groups actually live outside of the Russian Federation and outside Abkhazia itself, primarily residing in the Middle East. The flag of the Abkhaz people is that of the unrecognized state of Abkhazia. The seven stars represent the seven regions historically inhabited by Abkhazian people. The open palm is to represent peace and hospitality to friends and as a warning to enemies. As mentioned in our previous Abazin video, the Abkhaz people in antiquity lived very near their Circassian and Abazin neighbours. In these early days, there were conflicts between the Abkhazians and Greek and later Roman settlers, as well as with the neighbouring tribes surrounding them. However, even after Roman domination began in the Caucasus, the Abkhazians were never truly subjugated and primarily resided in the client state kingdom of Lazica in the 1st century BC. What is interesting is that Christianity had a very strong following with the Abkhazian people very early on. The reason for this is that their homeland of Lazica was deemed a place of exile for Christians in the early Roman Empire and thus spread widely amongst the population. By about the 3rd century AD, Christianity was prevalent among the Abkhazians. Throughout this period, the Abkhazians resisted Roman rule. This struggle against Roman rule was augmented when they also began struggling against Arab invaders in the middle of the 6th century. Finally, in 780 AD, an independent Abkhazian kingdom was established with help from the Khazars. This kingdom prospered for over 200 years before a royal marriage united the Abkhazian people with the Georgians. This is significant partly because the Abkhazian language went from looking like this to looking like this. This was part of the Georgianization of their language and culture, something that can still be seen in parts of Abkhazian culture today. As the Abkhazians and Georgians shared a history at this moment in time, they also shared the same fates. First, the Mongol invasion of 1221, then Timur in 1385, followed by the invasion of Turkmen at the beginning of the 15th century caused untold misery for the Abkhazian people. By 1491, the Georgian kingdom had fallen and Abkhazians were spread across the western part of the Caucasus mountain range in what is now known as Abkhazia and then the western part of Georgia then called Imhreti. During this time, the Abkhazians, along with another group living under the Georgian kingdom, the Mingrelians, were often fighting over land and resources. However, towards the end of the 16th century, they actually put aside their differences, faced with a much graver threat the Ottomans. From 1550 onward, we see the Ottomans begin to control Abkhazia and therefore the Abkhazian people. Islam begins to spread as well at this point, becoming the religion of choice. This adoption was not an immediate thing and there were sporadic rebellions all the way up to 1800 AD. It is not immediately clear how Islam spread. The most popular theory is, much like in the Adigya video, it was taken on by the nobility and then descended through the ranks. 
Another interesting fact to bear in mind is that slavery was very prevalent in the Caucasus at this particular moment in time, and the Muslim Ottomans would not enslave fellow Muslims. Whilst many of the Abkhazians were captured and sold in the great slave markets in Istanbul, many others converted for a quieter life, and some even assisted in these raids. Russian influence in the region can be seen from 1810 onwards. As part of the wider Caucasian wars, a large proportion of the Abkhazian people were forced to flee to the Ottoman Empire proper. Some scholars even suggest this may be as high as 60% of all Abkhazians at that time. Regardless, a large proportion of the Abkhaz population did leave their homeland during this period, and their communities can still be seen today, residing primarily in the Middle East. Once the Russians had conquered the land, there was a very interesting change. Abkhazians who refused to convert back to Christianity were not allowed in any of the coastal settlements and were forced to live further inland in the mountains. In their place, other groups such as the Georgians were invited to take up the vacant farmland and occupy their cities. This is a factor worth bearing in mind when we discuss later Abkhaz history. By the time of the October Revolution, 1917, Abkhaz nationalism was high. Abkhazians were torn in their loyalty between the short-lived mountain republic and homegrown Bolshevik movements. Ultimately, the Bolsheviks won, and many Abkhaz spread across the Soviet Union, helping to build and fight the revolution. However, the Abkhaz population began to decline, particularly in Abkhazia, as the demographics changed. More Russians and Georgians were being brought in to work in the factories and on the farms. This trend continued for many years and culminated just after the fall of the Soviet Union. Abkhazians now found themselves at odds with their neighbour, Georgia. Abkhazians, who for so long had worked alongside Russians and Georgians, now found themselves at odds. Fears of losing any autonomy if created as part of Georgia, Abkhazians have been pushing towards the end of the Soviet Union for the creation of their own Soviet Republic. However, this was denied and violence broke out. The fighting was fierce, with the Abkhazians receiving support from other Caucasian groups such as the Chechens as well as Cossacks. Eventually, it ground to a stalemate, followed by a ceasefire. Even today, Georgia maintains that Abkhazia is simply part of its country, and the Abkhazians therefore would be Georgian citizens. However, this is fiercely disputed. During the fighting, atrocities were committed on both sides. And today, most Abkhazians live in their republic, which is far less diverse than it used to be. However, as we have seen, many Abkhazians reside in Russia. This is a legacy of those fleeing violence and conflict and simply looking for a better life for themselves and their children. Whilst figures are quite hard to get detail on, on all the Abkhazian people, as some do not necessarily identify as Abkhazian but rather another nationality, the majority of those who are living in Russia appear to be Christian, whereas globally it seems there are far more Muslim Abkhazians than Christians. Interestingly, despite most Abkhazians being either Christian or Muslim, there are still a minority who adhere to the ancient native faith. This faith goes back to before Roman times and is a polytheistic faith with various gods of various things. According to a 2008 census, in Abkhazia, 8% of all Abkhazians follow this faith, so the following might even be wider abroad. Abkhazian national dress is something that follows a trend across all the Caucasus. Men are seen wearing felt hats and capes. Meanwhile, women wear very bright dresses with a multitude of patterns and patchworks sewn in there. Very striking to the eye, as you can see. As we have discussed, the Abkhazians come in many shapes and forms, with at least 15 tribes. But there is one tribe in particular I would like to finish on. At the mouth of the Kadori River are several villages all of them inhabited by black Abkhazians. Abkhazia was traditionally a place where slaves were taken from, not to, and thus it is highly unusual that these Afro-Abkhazians reside there. This community, who speaks both Abkhaz and Russian, have been there since at least the 1700s. There are many hypotheses as to how these Abkhazians came to be there. However, one of the more interesting is that this is the legacy of a failed attempt to introduce African slavery on the citrus farms found in Abkhazia. With the unrecognized state of Abkhazia being supported both military and economically by the Russian Federation, there is very little chance of Abkhazian culture disappearing.
Whilst many Abkhazians do reside in the Russian Federation, more are slowly drifting back as peace returns. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. Our next video will be on the Andean people. No, not those ones. The Andean people. Back at.